people, how are you? My name is Jessie and this is Miss Lee Pages and this is KnitCast number two. So um, KnitCast is essentially a podcast where I talk about my knitting projects and the stuff that I'm working on and the stuff that I would like to work on as well as talk about um, the tools I've found and the nifty yarn that I have purchased um, and all that kind of good stuff. So. Those of you who have, who have been with me a while, thank you so much for watching. Um, you might remember when my um, knitting stuff was in the floss tube videos. Um, for those of you who are brand new, if you want to see any previous information about stuff that I talk here, um, talk about here, you'll want to check out my knitting podcast number one, where I actually gave you those episodes um, of my floss tube where I talked about knitting stuff. Um, in either case, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you, and I'm glad you're here. Um, I hope you'll enjoy what you see today. Um, I do have a lot of haul to share with you, which I'm really excited about, so I'll talk about that in a little bit. But first, let's get to the whips. So um, I, I have a lot of stuff to show you. I didn't think I was going to have a ton of stuff, um, but I keep putting things on the needles instead of taking them off, so I have a lot of whips. Um, and I will say that my oldest whip, um, my longest running whip, I'm not going to show today because I've only put two rows on it, so there's not really any progress. And also it's upstairs with my husband who is sleeping because he's on night shift right now. So, <laughs> so you won't see that, but I will start with my second oldest whip. Um, and I, as a preface, um, as, a, as a quick preface, um, I only recently realized that it helps a lot to show your progress if you put a stitch marker where you stopped last before when you did a podcast. Um, so yeah, so I don't have stitch markers to show you exact, um, the exact areas that I stopped in to show you the full progress that I have done, but I'll try to estimate it for you. And then going forward, there will be stitch markers, I promise. So um, this is my second oldest whip. Let me untangle it here. And, okay. <laughs> um, I have it in one of my darn good yarn um, knitting bowls here. Uh, my mom purchased a couple of these um, a few years ago, so now I have two of these. Um, and as you can see, I have my three colors of yarn. I've got a, knit, a, a stitch counter that I barely use um, and some other stuff in there. So it's super fun. It keeps the whole thing together. So this, if you recall, let me just get it situated on the needles here. This, if you recall, is my Mini Skein Infinity Scarf. Um, and I originally saw this pattern, um, or saw this being stitched up by Michelle G of Bendy Stitchy. Um, and I really, really loved um, the way it looked and the way it was working up. Now she had um, a mystery skein pack that she was using. I think it was, I forget what the who the dyer was, um, but it was one of those advent things for Valentine's Day or something like that. So what she decided to do, instead of doing um, the shorter bands, she's actually using an entire skein um, each time and knitting those together. I am actually doing the called for rows here, which is um, it's 16 rows um, for each color, and then I'm switching off to the next color. And as you can see, I have three colors going through here. It looks really nice on camera. I'm really loving this. So um, if you recall last time, I think I was about, I think I was here. So um, that's what, close to 12 inches. I Size is not my friend. Um, when I finally learned about putting stitch markers on, I put the stitch marker on here. So I had actually stitched probably that much uh, before I knew about stitch markers. So since then, I've stitched this much. <laughs> I've knitted this much, um, which I'm super excited about. This actually, it's funny because this was, I forget what I called it, like the, um, uh, in my first, when I first talked about it, I had so much trouble casting it on. I think I cast it on four different times. Um, and so I had a special name for it that I've since forgotten because at first it was the biggest pain in the butt and now it's just so enjoyable. And I think it's because um, the way this is stitched, you have, um, it's mostly just knit stitches on the right side and then um, it's all purl stitches on the back side. And you just have a couple of different things that you do as you go across, but it's, it's just enough um, different things to do that it's not too boring, um, but it's not so many different things to do that I have to pay a ton of attention to it. So this is actually a really nice relaxing um, knitting project to work on 
And um, a couple of times I've actually taken this to bed and listened to an audio book um, and stitched a few rows to try to get myself relaxed and ready for sleep. So this is really nice. I'm super enjoying this. Um, I had actually bought, um, so this is Robin's Egg. These are from A Chick That Knits. Um, this is Robin's Egg. And this color is Stiletto. And <clears throat> this color, I believe, is Roses in Bloom. Um, I actually had the tag out recently and I put it away again. Um, but I bought three um, different colorways of her mini, ska mini skeins. Um, and I bought three of this color because I was going to use it as the, the main base. And then um, two skeins of this and two skeins of this um, so for a total of seven. <laughs> Math is not my strong suit. Maybe I shouldn't be a knitter. Um, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, for a total of seven skeins, and originally I was going to use all of that in this, um, but as I'm coming to what I think might be the center point, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to use, finish up these two of the, the, I'm going to finish up this skein and this skein, and then I think that'll be the end. Um, so what I realized with um, Roses and Bloom this color, this kind of white speckledy color here, is that I was able to get one, two, three, four, five sections before I had to switch skeins. So if that's true of the other two colors, then I can get three more of the stiletto. I'm sorry, the focus is wonky. I'm moving too much. Okay, um, so I can get three more stilettos and two more of the robin's egg. And if that's the case, um, like I said, that makes this about the middle. And if I can do this without being too silly. So it'll make this about double in length. Once I get that, she'll bring it down about here. And I think that might be as long as, as I need it. I think that might be a nice length. Okay, let me make sure I'm not gonna <laughs> drop things off. I did not plan that well. <laughs> <laughs> so I apologize if that was super awkward. Um, you can also see I'm doing this interesting thing here. This is helping me count my rows. Um, and I actually, at some point, will either make or buy um, some, some decent, more decent um, row counters. The way this works is I actually have, I have seven of these little clippy things, um, clippy stitch counters, um, hooked together. This red one, excuse me, this red one is row number one. And then as I go, I just move it up one. And then once I get, once I finish row seven, um, and this is rows on the right side, once I finish row seven, I pull this off and then I know when I come back to it um, after, yeah, when I come back to it after row eight, it's time to put it back on and start a new color. So um, it makes sense to me. I don't know if I explained it terribly well just then. Um, but what I'd like to do is actually get um, stitch markers that have numbers on them so that I don't have to remember that the red is the, the one. Um, but that's why the red is on one end because that's like, it alerts my brain that that's the, that's the correct end. So I always know based on where the red one is exactly how many more sections I need to do. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, this is the Mini Skein Infinity Scarf by Lovebird Lane, and I'm loving how this is knitting up. I can't wait to finish it. And once I, once I bind it off, um, I have to look at the finishing instructions, but once I bind it off, I'm going to then um, stitch it together to make it an Infinity Scarf. So the idea is that it will be long enough that I can put it over, twist it, and then put it over again, um, and hopefully it'll hang in this general vicinity. Um, that's, I don't want it to be too close to my neck so that I feel claustrophobic, but I do want it to kind of bunch up and drape in this area. So we'll see how that works. Um, it will also, this may also end up being my first experience blocking which kind of scares me. Um, I have not ever blocked before, and I certainly have not blocked with hand-dyed yarn, so. <laughs> Scary. Um, yeah, so I've done, I got a lot of progress on this. It's super quick to knit, which I really, really love, um, and I'm really enjoying it. I may end up making multiples of these because I have, I have this thing for mini skeins, <laughs> which you will find out shortly. Um, and this is a really great, great way to use um, lots of different colors all together. So that is, that is that. Put this somewhere. Okay. 
my workspace is a mess right now. <laughs> it just is. Um, so then the second thing that I started working on, um, and this is a cute bag that I got from, um, what is the magazine? Happily Hooked magazine. So I had, um, I had signed up for subscription and they're supposed to send me free gifts and it took forever, but I finally got my free gifts and this was one of them, which I love. This is a really generously sized bag too. You could put like probably three or four, um, like four or seven ounce skeins, the lar the longer like Karen skeins, you could put a lot of skeins in here. It's really nice and generous. Um, and in here I have the other of those, um, those yarn bowls, which are so fun. So I have the yarn bowl. And this piece is, I'm trying to remember what the name of the pattern is. I have it right here, but I don't want to show the pattern. Uh, this is Changing Staircases. And this is a pattern uh, from Dragon Horde Yarn. I should have the link in my link haven for you to look at. So, oops, ooh, that's not good. My needle got stuck on a piece of lace from a previous row. Ooh. Okay, well let that be a lesson to you to be careful how you store your projects because hopefully that will that will come out and get straightened out as I work on stuff. But uh yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> this is Changing Staircases, which is a really fun pattern. It, um, it's one of those shawls that you start in one corner and it grows as you knit it. Um, and I think these are super fun. I'm one of those people, I don't like casting on 700 stitches. I hate counting to 100 to 200 or whatever. So I love when I can start with four stitches <laughs> and then just work my way up. So it's kind of hard to show you because obviously this has not been blocked. Um, the other thing I love about this, I love how this um, this end curls. I can't, sh it's so hard to show you. So I love how this end curls like that. Um, and because of the way you stitch this, it has this gorgeous sort of seam that happens. I am not doing a great job of showing you this. It has this gorgeous sort of seam that happens on this front edge love it love it love it and then this is um, because this is a lace pattern we have the sections of uh, stockinette stitch interspersed with the lacier sections which I think are fantastic and this yarn is like oh my gosh this is this colorway is awesome I love it love it um, also the teeth I love the teeth on the side okay I apologize that I'm, I'm like kind of all over the place today and I'm having the worst time trying to get this to show up on camera for you. So I love the little teeth here. So this yarn is um, from Paisley Pearl Yarn and that's pearl like a pearl and yarn. Um, so P-U-R-L. She is based in Stafford, Virginia so she's semi-local to me which is the was the first exciting thing. Um, and this particular colorway is called Electric Avenue. My brain blanked for a second. She has a collection of I Love the 80s colors um, and this one was so beautiful in the Hank I could not even get over it. So when she said she was going to do, and she does classes, um, she does these Zoom classes which are pretty fun, and um, so when she said she was going to do a lace shawl class I was like, yes please, and Electric Avenue is the yarn that I picked. And it stitches up so beautifully. I love, or it knits up so beautifully. I keep saying stitch because I'm mostly, I'm primarily probably a cross stitcher. So I use stitch interchangeably with knit and I apologize for that. But um, it knits up so beautifully. And one of the fun things about knitting this is that I'm constantly just waiting for the next color change and that keeps it really interesting for me. So if I were doing this project on a solid color, it probably wouldn't be nearly as fun but doing it with this color, with this bright, beautiful, ever-changing colorway is just fantastic because I find myself going, oh, when's the teal going to come up again? Oh, when's the purple going to come up again? Yeah, so um, silly things my brain does when I knit. Um, but yeah, so that's where I am. I'm trying to remember, I have no idea where I was <laughs> when I showed it to you last. And since I didn't um, put a stitch marker on here, I have no way of knowing. I think I probably did, um, probably stitched from here up. 
So I probably finished a stockinette section and then did the lace section and started into the next stockinette. I haven't worked on it a lot because this is um, one of the more complicated patterns I have. Um, so it takes more brain power and a lot of times when I have that much brain power I'm actually cross stitching so but still love this yarn this is the rest of the yarn how gorgeous is that beautiful beautiful and I'm trying to remember actually I could just look at the pattern I haven't marked on the pattern so this pattern actually has a total of 248 rows <clears throat> And I have completed 161. <coughs> so uh, my math skills are not strong. I'm close to halfway, I guess. 250 would be 175. Not quite halfway. So yeah, math. <laughs> So yeah, that's where I am with changing staircases. I love this pattern. Uh, Michelle Bendy Stitchy is working on, a, uh, or was working, I think she's finished it now, um, a hitchhiker scarf. Named the hitchhiker scarf because the teeth on the side, number 42, which is fantastic. I didn't, I kept trying to figure out why she was calling it the hitchhiker scarf. And it didn't make any sense to me. I'm, okay, focus, focus, okay. It, I couldn't understand why she was calling it the Hitchhiker Scarf. I thought that was the name of the pattern. I think it is the name of the pattern, actually. Um, but it's because there are 42 teeth. And yeah, if you know anything about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, um, that's amusing. So that pattern is very similar to this, but it's I think it's all garter stitch, not garter stitch, all stockinette versus having any lace. So I might I might do that pattern um, for something else in the future because I love I love the way this knits up I like the little teeth on the side I just it's just a fun pattern so doing one that doesn't have any lace might be slightly easier um, <clears throat> might be a little bit faster so I might look towards doing that in the future um, I should have mentioned too the other thing I really love about the way that um, Michelle G is doing or yeah is doing her infinity scarf she calls hers the Doctor Who scarf which also I didn't understand why she was calling it that for the longest time um, and then recently she mentioned that she calls her infinity scarf the Doctor Who scarf because she has all those beautiful mini skeins and she's just using every single one of them and putting it all into the scarf which is just like the fourth doctor and how he got his knitted scarf so I think that's awesome it's fantastic I love it when crafts and geekery come together <laughs> so let's see so that is whip number two I also I forget what order I did these in so let me just I'll just show you this one first so this is actually a special thing I haven't worked a lot on it because the pattern was kind of tripping me up a little bit um, but this is and it's caught on um, so the pattern here is the empower people bandana knit pattern and I can show you this um, so the reason that this is a special piece um, is because this is part of the Empower People movement. Um, it's a craft craftivism movement. I apologize, craftivism movement. Um, I posted about this on my Instagram, um, and I would urge you to um, to check out Empower People. I'm trying to remember what the website is. Um, uh, of course, it's not listed here. Let me see. Okay, uh, empowerpeople2020.com. Um, I'll try to make sure that I put a, a put a link in the description here. Um, but check out empowerpeople2020.com for more information about this craftivism movement. Um, the idea behind this specific pattern, there's a crochet version and I believe there's a sewing version as well. These are all free patterns that are available to you. Um, the only ask is that you do it in purple um, some kind of purple, whatever kind of purple, um, and that once you make it, you wear it around, especially when you're doing things like voting and, um, you know, doing civic duties, doing visible um, civic stuff so that you can show your support for um, people of color, for Black Lives Matter, for um, empowering women and empowering people of color. 
and all these sorts of things. Like I said, check out their website for more specific details, but that's sort of the, the baseline idea. Um, so my plan is to get this knitted up prior to, um, well, certainly before the elections, that's not till November, um, but it's to get it knitted up soon so that I can wear it around so that I can um, be part of this visible um, empowerment movement. And um, the pattern is relatively simple. Um, I think I'm just somewhat, I'm inexperienced enough and this yarn is a little weird um, <laughs> that I was having some issues with it. So I've modified it slightly, um, mostly because the pattern calls for you to purl the first stitch and that was causing me issues. Um, if you've been with me for any length of time, you, you know that I, I knit differently. Um, <laughs> Uh, my knit, knit, bleh, knitting skills are a little interesting, and so um, I ended up, uh, after discussing with um, Heike and Rachel, I ended up deciding to slip the first stitch um, instead of purling it, and that is actually helping me a lot. So, um, as you saw here, I'm talking a lot, not showing you. So this is what the bandana is supposed to look like. Um, and it can be a scarf or a bandana. It's, um, it's designed so that you knit it and then you sew it together um, so that it is one, um, one solid piece once you're finished. So you can wear it as a headscarf, as a bandana. You can wear it as a, as a cowl, um, however you choose to wear it. Um, and this is what I have so far. So <laughs> I think I started it and restarted it like six times or something like that. Because even though it's like it's really short and just a small small piece to get started like I said that purl stitch on the front was really messing me up because it was giving me this side was so loose and it was really messy and it was really killing me so um, so yeah I'm slipping the first stitch instead of purling the first stitch and this yarn this is huge um, so this is um, one of my knit crate yarns I forget which month but this is Uru yarn sugared sport um, and this colorway is lapis um, which drew a lot of um, um, curiosity when I posted about it on Facebook and Instagram because lapis is not purple <laughs> and this is it's coming off a little bit more blue on camera um, but lapis is actually a blue stone um, it's it's not purple in any way shape or form so I'm not really sure why they named this colorway of lapis um, that's it's not appropriate um, for the color but it's still a pretty color it's purple it's sparkly it's got Stellina so this is a 70% superwash merino 20% nylon 10% Stellina sport weight 300 yards so it's um, this is a hundred grams so that's a lot of yarn um, I'm gonna have lots left over but I, I purchased a bunch of this before I realized I wasn't gonna like Stelina <laughs> so um, that is the empower people bandana knit um, pattern and like I say I have a, I have a long way to go <laughs> but it's a relatively simple pattern I just need to get going on it I struggled with it so much when I first started that it kind of discouraged me and additionally um, I got into this other project that I'm going to show you and that distracted me um, has been distracting me for a while from the rest of my knitting oh and I should I meant I should have mentioned I bought a bunch of these bags from Knit Crate um, I don't think they're available anymore um, but unlike those first teeny tiny bags that I purchased that ended up being like this big, um, these are actually big enough to put projects in, which is awesome. So unlike the, um, the bag that I got from Happily Hooked magazine, this will only hold, um, maybe one skein. So I've got the, I have the hundred gram skein in here, um, and it fits. If the project were really large, I'd have trouble putting it in the bag. Um, but because this project is not going to be terribly large, it works well. Um, and it also, this is also a great size for the next project I'm going to show you. So, um, as I mentioned, Paisley Pearl, who is one of my favorite dyers, she does um, online classes, um, knitting classes. And so, um, I obviously haven't finished my scarf yet, but she started a sock class. And I decided, yes, I need to get in on that. So um, I purchased some really fancy Xiaogu double pointed needles um, and I finally just just as I'm learning to knit socks I, I finally learned why you get so many 
double pointed needles when you buy sets of double pointed needles because for a sock you need as many as five needles and I'll show you why here in a second. If you already know how to knit socks, then you can probably fast forward through some of this because you already know what you're doing. Um, if you're like me and you had no clue, then you're like, why do you need five needles? What is that about? Um, <laughs> let's talk about it. <laughs> um, so I was totally clueless when it came to socks. And I was like, well, I managed to tackle lace. I can tackle a sock. Well, let's figure this out. So the first thing was picking my yarn. And it's not going to come out on camera like I want it to. This is another I Love the 80s uh, colorway from Paisley Pearl. This one is called Video Killed the Radio Star. Um, and it's you're not seeing it as much, but there is some deep violet. And there's some like bright pink, um, almost like hot fuchsia. And there is some fluorescent yellow. There is like, there's all the things. And it's on this gray base. And when I saw it, um, on her website. It's actually so much be more beautiful in person than it even is on the website. But when I saw it on the website, I was like, that is really cool. But I had no idea what I would make out of it that I would actually wear. So when she decided to do the sock class, I was like, you know what? I will make socks out of this because if I have it on my feet, it's not going to be that big a deal if I don't like the colorway. <laughs> so I decided if I was ever going to use it for anything, then using it for socks was probably going to be the best thing. So I bought it to do my socks. I love it, love it, love it. I actually caked this myself. This was like the first, um, one of the first things I've ever caked from one of those twisted hanks. I also caked the um, the uh, lapis from Knit Crate. Um, I caked that myself. So um, it looks kind of sloppy. I think I need to work with the tension um, on my winder. Not my winder, but my um, my Swift. I have, and at some point I may do a video, um, I have an Amish style Swift. So if you wind your own yarn, you might be familiar with the umbrella style. So it kind of accordions in and accordions out according to how big your, um, your twisted hank is. But the Amish style is actually flat. So it's four, four individual bars that cross in the middle. And then you have pegs to sort out how wide your, your hank is. And you, you arrange the hank around those pegs until it's taut. And then you set it up with your winder. You run it through your winder and the um, the whole shebang just spins um, and I like it a lot better than accordion because I know that some people have had issues with their accordion style break not accordion their umbrella style breaking um, and also it just looks scary to me <laughs> and you have to you have to like hang it up somewhere or have some kind of vice situation it kind of needs to be semi permanently stationed somewhere um, so I really like the idea of the, the Amish style because it just sits on the top of your table. You, un, you, you take all the pieces apart and put it away when you're done. It's, it's just super simple. I love it. Um, but I do think I need to work on my tension because I'm not getting as tight a ball as I would like. So let's look at my socks. Look y'all, I have a sock or part of a sock. <laughs> So I'm actually super proud of myself because um, the idea of doing ribbing was I never thought I would actually do ribbing. I never thought I was capable of such a thing. But look at that. I have real ribbing, y'all. It's it's even it's legit and it's nice looking and it's super stretchy, which is nice. Um, so um, goodness, Rachel at Paisley Pearl, she taught us. And I'm going to forget the name of the, uh, the cast on. There's a, um, it's a Norwegian cast on, I think is what it's called, um, that gives you this stretchy um, cast on so that you can do ribs like this and they will stretch for you so that you're not, you're not limited. Um, so that's really, really nice. And it turns out, I had no idea this was a thing, it turns out I did a twisted rib for my ribbing. So that's apparently a specific thing that you can do that I did totally by accident. Um, it just, it has to do with stitching in the back loops, knitting in the back loops, um, which I do as a matter of course, because it's just far easier for me to, to knit in the back loops than it is to knit in the front loops like you're supposed to. Um, but apparently that gives you this really, really defined knit on your ribs, um, which makes it look really, really cool. You also, I can tell, I don't know if you can tell, um, you also may be able to see the couple of rows that I did like in the wrong direction or something. Because <laughs> I can see a couple of rows that look wonky. But anyway, <laughs> um, so this is my sock. And this is the reason that you need five needles <laughs> when, you're, 
when you're knitting socks. So um, let me see if I can show you. So there are actually four needles in here. Um, I have 16 stitches on each, each needle, and then you need the fifth one to actually do the knitting. Um, so you knit off of one needle onto the needle in your hand, um, and then you just continue around and around and around. Now, I'm having a lot of issues with these double pointed needles. Um, first and foremost, completely outside of the logistics of using double pointed needles, one of the issues you may experience, um, that I have experienced, is this thing called laddering. So um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you on camera. I'm trying to find out. In some places, it's not noticeable. Um, in some places, it's super noticeable. Um, okay. I'm not, okay. Let me just try to show you. So, oh, yeah, you can see that, I think. So can you see, if it'll focus, focus camera, okay, um, if you can see here, if my camera will stay focused, there is actually a place on this side, okay, where the, the knit stitches are actually separating a little bit. Yeah, you can see it down here, but I mean, you can see it up at the top. But if I stretch it, you see that extra give between the stitches, that's laddering. Um, that's the thing you don't want to happen in pretty much any of your stitching in the round. Um, and it's, I, do, I haven't figured out a good way to prevent that from happening. Now, it, it's supposed to have something to do with how tightly you pull your stitches together as you're joining from one needle to the next. Um, but it doesn't seem to matter how much tension or how little tension, I'm still getting that laddering, uh, which is really, really frustrating. So um, that's the first thing about double pointed needles. The second thing is, oh my God, they're just in the way. <laughs> these are six inch double pointed needles. Um, and if I had known when I purchased these, I would have looked for four inches to start with because this is just, there's just so much needle everywhere. Um, and maybe if you have smaller hands, it's not as much of an issue, but I have, I have relatively large hands. Um, and this is difficult. I am constantly trying not to stab myself and trying to get the needle out of the way um, to be able to work on it. It's just really, it's really, really awful. I really dislike it. Um, and so it has been as much sock as I have, and I think I might actually, <clears throat> I, I'm supposed to stitch until this entire thing is seven inches. That's, that's what the pattern suggests based on Rachel's class. Um, but I think I'm actually going to stop here and start the heel because I like shorty socks anyway. So um, in order to save myself time and frustration and stuff like that, I might just go ahead and start the heel. Um, but yeah, you're supposed to stitch it until it's like here <laughs> or knit it. Um, but this is so painful. It's so painful with these double pointed needles, literally and figuratively. It's just really, really painful. So that's why I haven't gotten any further. In fact, the class I think has all finished their socks. I haven't even gotten to the heel because I kind of was like, ugh. For so I was doing so many other things. I was just like, you know, I don't have time for this. So. What I'm going to do, um, I'm actually, I think I'm going to leave this particular sock on the double pointed needles. I'm going to continue sti uh, knitting with these, um, but I have purchased um, additional needles. I have purchased a couple of short, um, short circular needles that are designed for stitching socks. Um, I've also purchased some regular circular needles um, with like 16 inch um, cords that are in sock sizes, um, and and I've also purchased some four inch double pointed needles. It sounds like a lot, but I honestly don't know what I'm gonna enjoy more. So um, to give myself a lot of options, I've purchased a bunch of stuff. Um, most of that I've purchased from Knit Picks, so I'm just waiting on that um, order to arrive. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna continue these on the double pointed needles and see how that goes. I'm gonna start the next sock on a circular set. Um, some kind of sock knitting needle that is going to let me not have to deal with all of this laddering and stuff like that. And then we'll see how that goes. We'll see what I prefer. I have a feeling that the circular sock needles, the sock wonder needles and stuff like that are going to feel too short and I might not be able to maneuver as much as I'd like. So I may end up doing socks on um, 
16 inch circulars. So we'll just see. We will see. Um, but yeah, so that is a sock. I'm still super proud of this ribbing. And honestly, part of me wants to actually not knit it up like a sock and knit it up like a fingerless glove. I'm not going to put it all the way on, but it actually, it fits my wrist. <laughs> so I could totally wear this as a fingerless glove. And I'm wondering actually if I can make two socks and still have enough to do gloves. Because that would be awesome. I've been wanting to make fingerless gloves since forever. So um, yeah, so that's going to be a thing. But yeah, that was a lot. It was a lot of talk, but I have started socks. Um, I may actually have a finished sock before I talk to you again. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that is that. So that is that is all of my whips, um, which is a lot of whips, I think, for knitting. Um, hopefully someday soon I'll have a finish to show you. <laughs> Um, it's hard to say whether it will be the sock, which is smaller, um, or whether it will actually be my infinity skein scarf, which is just faster. So, but that is that. Oh, I need to put these needles in this bag too. I do love these little knit something or make something today bags because they're so, so convenient for keeping my projects separated. And um, as you can see, because of the way that Rachel sends her cards with her yarn, um, I actually was able to attach it to the zipper, so I always know which project this is because it's got my, my video killed the radio star um, tag on it. So that's cool. I enjoy that. Okay, so having finished the whips, let's talk about things I have purchased. Um, I do have some of those needles that I just talked about. I have some of those here, but I have not pulled them out to show you. And honestly, until I use them, they're just needles, and you've seen knitting needles before, so let's talk about yarn. I have this, I have an entire bag over here, y'all. This is chock full, chock full of the yarn that I have purchased since we last talked. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you is the, this is the latest knit crate I have received, which is not the latest knit crate, so July has yet to ship. Um, they have been sending updates, but apparently the yarn is stuck in Peru, I believe. Um, and because flights are scarce, the yarn hasn't made it on a plane, so it hasn't arrived in Miami, so it hasn't been shipped yet. And um, they hoped it would be shipped later this week. Um, I haven't gotten a further update on that yet. So July, we'll make it sometime in August. Yeah, Nick Crate's having issues. Um, <clears throat> so this is actually June. June knit crate um, and so spoiler alert if you have not looked at June yet if you are waiting to open your package for some reason even though it's the end of July <laughs> just FYI um, I'm, I'm about to show June's knit crate <laughs> um, I got the um, chill out colorway um, and this yarn is Audine Wool's um, inter Inter something interlock. Um, I'm gonna preface this because I am not a fan. I'm not a fan of this yarn um, for a number of reasons, but let me just show you. So this is the yarn. I'm trying to get it closer so you can really see the weave there, how it looks. So um, this is a 34% cotton, 35% linen, 19% lyocell, 11% nylon, 100 grams. This colorway is haze. Oh, sorry, I feel like I have fuzz on my face. Um, so yeah, um, having read, and I, I don't think I read the, um, the fiber content when I purchased this. Ugh, I have a hair in my face. Apologies. Um, I don't think I read the fiber content when I signed up for this crate because I might have I might have passed. So I think the reason, so one of my biggest issues, you can see maybe um, that this yarn looks a little strange. It almost looks like braided fibers that you're going to knit or crochet with, which is a little weird to me. So the feel of it, it's nice and soft to feel but um, it looks kind of shabby. Um, it almost looks dirty, like it's been wrung through something. And the fibers are squished and flat. Um, so I just don't know, 
I don't know that that's going to knit up into anything pretty or feel good as I'm knitting it because it's it's a very flat sort of fiber. It's just very strange, and I guess it's because it's it's a cotton linen lyocell nylon mix. So it's it's a mix of a whole bunch of things that normally aren't in um, what you would cons aren't in your regular. I mean, most yarns wool. Um, or some combination of wool. So it's just, it's different. I think the color is not bad. Um, if I had this colorway on, on a super wash base, I'd probably be really into it. Um, but because of the, the cotton linen base, it's actually a little strange. And parts of this actually do look like they've just gotten dirty. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's just the colorway or what. So I don't know. I'm not, I'm not totally in love with this. I'm not totally sold on this. Um, so we'll see, but I have two hundred gram skeins. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, and I think, yeah. So this is the this is the free gift, which is that's fine. Um, their free gifts have gotten interesting lately. Um, I don't know that I would use those pins, but sure, why not? Um, so that is the last knit crate that I got. July's knit crate, I think, will be much more to my liking, um, but that is, who knows when that's going to arrive. Okay, camera focus, focus, okay. Um, I think I'm learning you get what you pay for with my autofocus camera, because it does autofocus, but not the way I expected. So, okay, now... Um, let's go on to indie dyers because I have a whole bunch of independent dyers that I have purchased from. Some of these you've seen before, some of these you haven't. Um, I'm going to try to go oldest to newest. So the first is uh, Ruby and Rose's yarn, and I apologize because I'm going to crinkle. If I can find it. Okay. She had a couple of one of a kinds on sale. And I think this has been a month ago or so. I can't remember. I purchased this shortly after my last floss tube. So we've got her her card there, which is always nice. Um, and this first one is definitely a one of a kind. This is Orchid. And I think these are kind of like one pot wonders where she uses some extra dye or something like that. Or maybe it wasn't quite on the... Um, on par with the colorway she was intending to create and so she makes it into a one of a kind and sells it so this is really cool. Um, as is pretty typical of Madison it's got a lot of pink um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That pink is her favorite color and you can absolutely tell that in her color collections um, but this is really nice. It's got a lot of other colors in it as well as, as, well as this. Um, it's coming off kind of red on camera but there's actually it's actually more um, of a maroon or burgundy color really nice and this has a little bit of Stellina in it as well so this is 75 um, 75% merino 20% nylon 5% Stellina so I think this is going to be more enjoyable to work with than that um, knit crate yarn with the Stellina because it has so much less Stellina it's got just enough I think you can see it on camera it's got a little bit of sparkle but not a ton and she calls this her rose gold base um, so that's got the Stellina in it this other one has Stellina in it as well um, this, I think, is a regular colorway, though I'm not sure it's still available in her shop. This is called Evening Skies, and this is really nice. So this is a much more, um, obviously it's blue, not pink, um, but it's got some purples, it's got some deeper blues, some lighter blues, it's got a great mix of different colors in it. It's really nice. And this is also the rose, rose gold base, so it's got the same mix um, as the one of a kind here. So those are really gorgeous, and they're nice. They're a soft, like weighty yarn. I really like these. Very, very nice. I also purchased. Um, I mentioned in my last video that I had purchased from a company called Yarn Love, um, and they have they have some subscription packages that you can get and different things. Um, I just purchased a one shot. Um, Excuse me. Um, I just purchased a, an available color. Um, I didn't get a subscription. Oh, and this is really sweet. So there's a handwritten note. 
Um, and this colorway is called Polyjuice Potion, which I really think I'm going to love. I have not opened it yet. Um, I also love her logo. So it's an Art Nouveau style logo with the yarn and the knitting needles down at the bottom. It's fantastic. I love it. And then the back of the card has one of their gorgeous colorways. So that's, that's awesome. So um, I purchased this June 23rd because I have the invoice here. Um, there was a welcome discount, so um, I actually got this for about half price. It's really nice. Um, and it came wrapped. So pretty much any time I get a yarn in that is wrapped in any way, I like to keep it in its wrapping so that you can see what you might receive if you purchase from this company. So it came in the, the uh, poly bag with the card and the, um, the invoice, and it was wrapped just like this. This is Polyjuice Potion. Now, I'll be honest, I don't remember specifically what I saw on the website. Um, I thought it was brighter than this, but I really, I actually really like the way the colors have come out. So, um, again, it's not going to be super true on my camera because my camera is wonky, but the colors are really, really nice. Um, this is their Jane Austen based. All of their um, yarn love, all of their bases are named after um, women literary figures, uh, female literary figures. Um, so this is the Jane Austen base, which is an 84 super, 84 percent super wash merino, 16 percent Stellina, um, machine wash gentle, lay flat to dry. So this is four ounces, 375 yards. They suggest needle size US three to or zero to three. So, and again, that colorway is Polyjuice Potion, which is super, super cool. And it's got just a little bit of that, um, that Stellina sparkle, which is really nice. I do think 20% is maybe too much Stellina for a yarn, um, because these other two, um, I really didn't under, I didn't realize I had purchased so much stuff that has Stellina in it, but <laughs> apparently I did. Um, but these three, with their smaller uh, Stellina contents are actually much nicer, I think. Um, this is really fun. I'm gonna have to find a one skein wonder for this, a small pattern, or not a, not a small pattern, but I'm gonna have to find a pattern that only needs 375 yards um, to make this into because um, it, it needs to be something fabulous. So that's really nice. So that was Yarn Love. Um, I wish I could keep this sticker, but this sticker is such, it's a nice sticker, y'all. It's like a fancy waterproof sticker. Anyway. So, next. <laughs> they just keep coming. Um, this is... This is Forbidden Fiber Co. So we've seen Forbidden Fiber Co. Um, previously here. Um, but I bought a new mini skein pack. I purchased this the 1st of July. Um, all of these I've had for quite a while. Um, no, there's only one that's come in recently, so um, don't take me saying that I ordered it in July and I'm just opening it now to mean that I just received it. I've had these for a while. I've just been saving it all up for, for um, KnitCast. So um, I love the way that Fi Forbidden Fiber Co. wraps their stuff. It's just fantastic. So it comes in the bag and the cat is grooming herself, so she's shaking the camera. I apologize. So they wrap it up super nicely. Um, and I'm going to immediately rip it open. <laughs> this was a super fun colorway that I saw on their Instagram page, and I stalked it and stalked it. Um, these are, they call these mini skeins, um, but these are actually 50 gram skeins. Um, and this is a pack of six of them. It's approximately 1,300 yards total which is a lot, um, and it's called Pegasus. It's awesome. I really don't want to take this out of the bag, but I'm going to, because, pardon me, but I'm going to because I want you to be able to see the colors. Um, and this is on, what did I say? This is on their Fortitude base, which is 100% Superwash Merino. These colors are really, really nice. So, um, and I don't think they're individually named. So this is just a pack that comes together. Look at that blue. 
It's really nice. And that's more of a true blue. This is like a, a light denim. And then this is the main color I purchased this whole pack for. Purple. Super gorgeous. These are nice and soft. I love this yarn. This I love their 4 to 2 base. It's really nice. This is was the second color I bought this for. So this is more of a, um, a teal. Maybe not teal. Maybe more like an aqua. It's really nice. And then these other two are more like darker denim colors. So this is a really deep kind of navy. And then this is just a shade off of that. It's leaning towards teal. You can't see it on camera, but it's leaning towards teal. So those are really gorgeous. I'm very happy with that. I want, I really, really want, I don't know if I'm going to do this. Um, they have a white elephant box that you can purchase, um, <clears throat> which is... If you've ever played, um, or if you've ever done a white elephant gift exchange around the holidays, um, it's based on that idea. But you get a box with, um, I want to say, 24 packages. Not all of those are skeins of yarn. I think there's additional goodies in there. But you get 24 packages, um, and you, um, you open one yarn and a clue. And if you, and you knit that, or crochet it, they have a crochet version as well. Um, <clears throat> and you, you knit that or crochet that clue, and then you open, the next day you open up the next yarn package. And um, if you don't like the way that color goes with the color that you've already knitted or crocheted, then you open up a different package. And um, I think you can continue to do that. You can continue opening up packages until you get to a color that you like to go next, and then you can you can knit the next clue if you want to. You don't have to, but it's a it's a knit along or crochet along. Um, I can't remember if it's a mystery one or if you know the full pattern going into it or or what the deal is with that. But it looks like a really really cool thing. But because it's so much yarn, it is pretty pricey. Um, and I have already purchased um, Ruby and Roses Christmas Advent. So I already have 24 mini skeins coming for Christmas, um, but I love Forbidden Fiber Co.'s colorway so much, um, and I love the whole idea of their, their white elephant. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see how funds and everything go um, the next month or two, if they're still available, um, <clears throat> before I buy into that. Um, I will say, as I said, I already have the Ruby and Roses Christmas Advent coming, but I also... Um, and actually I'll talk about I I purchased another advent for fall and I'll talk about that here in a second because I think yes um, <clears throat> okay crinkling um, so um, I have purchased another advent for October um, and I'm probably gonna have to look up what it's called <laughs> um, but this one I'm, I'm super excited about this dyer um, and I can't remember. Okay, they are in Oregon. So, um, Ruby and Roses is somewhere out west. I can't remember. I feel really bad. Um, Forbidden Fiber Co. is in Tennessee, so they're really close to me. Um, Rebel Woolworks is a new one that I discovered. And I'm discovering a lot of my dyers on Instagram, to be perfectly honest. And then I'm looking them up on Etsy. Rebel, Rebel Woolworks is out of Oregon. Um, and they have some fantastic colors. Um, and let me just show you. So I saw them on Instagram because of this mini skein set that they posted a few months ago. And that sold out. So they did some pre-orders um, that they just finished in June, the end of June. So I didn't receive these until the beginning of July, which I had expected because I knew that it was a pre-order. Um, but I was so excited because these colors, oh my gosh, these colors. So here is... Here it is in the package. This is how it arrived to me in this package. And I'm going to take it out because you can't see the colors and they are gorgeous and you have to see them. Okay, so crinkle. So these are a much more muted sort of colorway. 
but I don't know. There's something. There's. I think they're just so deeply tonal. Like they just have so many layers and dimensions to the color. So this is a gray, which I have never been excited about gray in my life. But can you? Can you not? I mean, this is. Oh my gosh. This is. It matches my shirt. Um, this is a beautiful gray. The most beautiful gray I've ever seen. And purple. I can't remember what the names of these colors are. I think they actually have specific names. It's coming off a little bit more maroon, but trust me, this is a deep, gorgeous purple. <coughs> Pardon me, my throat's getting dry. And this is a nice blue, sort of navy, denim-ish. And I think you're getting that variegation. I mean, look just how many shades there are. This is one color. It's a single color. There's so many shades. It's just gorgeous. This, this is, oh my gosh, this teal. I think they call this truly teal. And uh, I wish my camera was ca was capturing the colors correctly. Because this is, this teal is life, y'all. This is fantastic. In fact, um, I bought, <laughs> I bought a whole skein of this color. This was their color of the month for June, I think. The real teal is what they call it. Um, so this teal was the color of the month for um, June. So their color of the month is discounted. Um, so I bought, <laughs> I bought a whole scan of this teal because, oh my gosh, y'all. Um, <clears throat> now these are, okay, so this other scan I got is 70% superwash, 30% nylon, but otherwise they're, they're basically the same. These are 75% superwash and 25% nylon, four ply but they're nice and soft. The colors are fantabulous. And I just, this, uh, I just can't, I can't, I can't even explain. And the camera is not showing you. And I apologize because Momo has decided it is full on bath time and she's just shaking the whole table. So, um, trying not to get anybody seasick. This yellow y'all, like I have never seen, I've never seen a yellow that I liked this much. I'm not a huge fan of yellow, but it's kind of like an ochre color, isn't it? I just love, normally I'm like a, you know, I am usually bright colors, like that's usually me, but for some reason these are just like so rich and deep, there's just something about them, I can't get over it, this orange, oh, orange, and finally this red, y'all, this red, oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah, so I've been excited about these for so long, and they're finally here, and they're my hot little hands, and I have to figure out, because I'm going to do these as a rainbow. You know I'm going to do them as a rainbow. <laughs> so I just, I have to figure out. Now, I might do an infinity, um, a mini skein infinity scarf, um, but part of me wants to do something different with these, something special. If you have any suggestions, let me know. Um, because I want to do something fantastic with those colors. I love them. Love, love, love. Um, let's see. We're getting close to the... Oh, we are at the bottom of the bag. We're finally at the bottom of the bag. <coughs> so, last but not least, this is a dyer out of Texas. Um, I got the bag here. So, um, I'm blanking on the dyer's name off the top of my head, but I'm sure it'll be on something in this package. Um, so, I received it in the poly bag as you do, um, but it came wrapped like this. So it's in its nice tissue paper. And I did just receive this earlier this week. I can't remember when I ordered, maybe two weeks ago. Um, but there's, um, they do say that sometimes they have the, the yarn on hand, sometimes they have to dye it, so it can take up to two weeks to ship. So I was prepared for that. But look how nicely that's wrapped. So I did purchase from them on Etsy. They don't have their own shop um, or their own website. They have an Etsy shop. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to unwrap this here. And it's super cute that they put um, a little card in here. And I can feel that this is an actual card. It's not just um, it's not just a piece of paper. So we'll thank you card. Very pretty. Oh, and there's a, um, there's a code for um, a discount on future orders and a handwritten note. I mean, this is a handwritten thank you card. Thanking me so much for my order. That's really sweet. Um, I do appreciate it when Etsy sellers, especially, but anybody really, when they put in these little extra touches just to make it a little bit more special. It's really nice. So that's really sweet of her. 
I will definitely be using that discount code. <laughs> Even not having seen the yarn, um, I remember that their yarns are really, really beautiful. So, um, and she has lots of minis. That's, <laughs> I'm all about the minis. So, um, Treehouse Knits is the name of the dyer. <laughs> I finally remember the name of the dyer. Um, and so this was a pack of mini skeins, and you know how much I love mini skeins, um, but she, these are like all of her seasonal colors um, for the moment. So it's eight mini skeins. I don't know, you can't see them all. Ugh. Okay, so we have some purples and pinks and one that's sort of a white with green speckles. And then we've got this like coral, dark green, light green, and then um, sort of a coordinating cream and green there. Um, and I'm going to show you these individually too. But this is this is the whole pack. I want to say this was around forty dollars, forty five dollars um, for the eight skeins. And hopefully these tags have. Um, they don't have the. Um, uh, fiber content. That's what I'm trying to say. They don't have the fiber content on them, so that's um, that's a shame. But for me, it's not that big a deal. Um, but they do have the little Treehouse Knits logo, which is super cute. Let me hold it up so you can see. Um, and yeah, so these are these are some really great colors. And I got this because this was basically one of everything that she offered. Um, I think there are a couple colors that um, that were not in this mini skein set, but this was most everything. So let's start going through it. So this is Secret Garden. This is that sort of cream with green speckles. Really nice. This is Gardens by the Bay, which is a really cute pink speckle. It's got a little bit of orange, a little bit of dark green. Really nice. These would coordinate well with some of Ruby and Roses, I think. <clears throat> Bondi Skies, which is a really sort of beachy, oceany kind of color. That's how that reads to me. Eucalyptus, which is um, which is a nice light green. It's got a little bit more variegation than is necessarily showing on camera. <clears throat> And this is Eden, which is a, a nice, rich, dark green. It's coming off a little flat on camera, but it's a nice green. And then we've got Coral Kiss, which is aptly named. It's a nice, vibrant coral color. Okay, focus. Uh, there we go. Um, and I do like that most or all of these will coordinate with each other in almost any combination, which I think is great. This color is called New Orleans which is really nice. It's got that gold. Okay, focus, focus, focus. There we go. So it's got that gold, the purple, a little bit of cream in there, some darker purple on the back. And then last but not least, Sun Sweet Berry, which is a really pretty colorway. I like them. You know me, I like the purples. So I like that, um, like I said, these these almost all coordinate with each other. Um, <clears throat> probably the only ones that I wouldn't, that I don't think, like these three coordinate with each other, but I don't know how well they coordinate with the rest of the group. But even so, three mini skeins together, mixed project, um, some kind of project. And then all of the rest of these um, could coordinate with each other in, in various combinations. Um, these would all work together. I think, depending on <clears throat> depending on exactly how you decided to uh, to combine them, but yeah, um, actually this pink would probably go over here. But <laughs> these definitely go together. Um, this pink is sort of a wild card; you could kind of throw it in wherever you liked, depending on how. But yeah, so I think that's great. It's at least two projects worth um, of coordinate, coordinating colors, if not multiple projects worth. So really excited. Again, that is Treehouse Knits. Um, so I'm excited to share those with you. Um, at the moment, uh, ah, I forgot to talk about it when I was talking about <laughs> Rebel Woolworths. So I mentioned, excuse me, I mentioned an advent in October. And let me... Um, I purchased from Rebel Woolworks an advent for October, and I honestly can't remember. Okay, it's called a Haunted Lodge. Let me show this to you. So, 
It's a, a Haunted Lodge Yarn Advent Calendar 2020. Um, and this is coming out in October, I believe. <clears throat> it will feature your choice of three available bases and will consist of 12 mini skeins and one full size skein for 13 days of Halloween countdown. Um, <clears throat> you could also purchase the 30 skeins to have a full month. Um, I did not do that. I did, I did the 13 days, um, because I felt like that was plenty enough. It was also much more affordable. It was like $65. Yeah. $65 for the base that I chose, uh, which was the, um, super sock base, um, which is four ply, 80% super wash, 20% nylon, um, a total of about 1360 yards. Um, because each mini skein is about 80 yards. So, um, if I understand correctly, she's had to, she doesn't have as many bases available right now because she's having some issues sourcing the yarn, um, to be dyed, but I believe she put the listing back up for super sock, um, base, which is what I had ordered. So if that's something you're interested in, I believe that is available for purchase. And the reason it's called, um, a haunted mansion. What did I just call it? <laughs> Oh, my memory is awesome. Um, a Haunted Lodge. Um, the reason it's called A Haunted Lodge is because it is um, it is a, a series of colorways based off of the actual existing lodge that was used for um, the, um, the lodge in The Shining. So if you're familiar with that movie, there is a very iconic winter bound, uh, like mountain bound lodge that they used for filming for that, that really, really exists in the real world. Um, and it's kind of creepy and, um, just like The Shining is super creepy. And so it is, um, it is a series of colorways based on, um, or inspired by that lodge, um, which is going to be really cool, I think. So I'm super excited about that. <clears throat> so that will be a total of 13 skeins that I get to open in October. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is, is maybe post videos every day as I open them or maybe every other day, because I might stretch it out for the entire month, um, rather than opening every skein, um, or each skein, opening a skein every day. But I do have that coming. So that's from Rebel Woolworks and based on their, um, they're fantastic colorways so far. I am super, super excited about that. I cannot imagine um, how it could be any better um, because her her eye for color is just really, really awesome. I love that it's it's more muted primitive colors, but somehow still really vibrant and dynamic. I don't know how she manages that, but I'm in love, in love. So I'm super excited about that. Super excited about Ro Ruby and Rose's um, Christmas advent in December. Um, and if I can manage to afford it, I might get Forbidden Fiber Co's White Elephant as well, because goodness knows I need more yarn. <laughs> but why not? I mean, if you can buy things to open one a day for a whole month, why not? Why not? You know, it's, it's just yarn. <laughs> um, I honestly cannot wait until I have my craft room open. Because once I finally get my craft room set up, um, I am hoping, I've actually already purchased the shelving. So I've purchased the cube shelving, white cube shelving, um, and that is going to be my primary place to store all of these gorgeous yarns. Um, so I'm hoping to actually have that be able to, I'm hoping to be able to have that in the background when I film going forward. Because the reason that I buy so much yarn is because it's gorgeous. I love color. I love all the bright colors. Um, and so I really want to not only be able to see that myself, but to have that just in my space, in my creative space. So anyway, I believe that's all I have for you. So uh, if you're working on something fun, I would love to hear about it. If you um, have learned about other um, yarn advents that you're excited about, let me know. Um, Momo's getting ready to walk through everything, so that should be fun. Um, but yeah, let me know what fun and exciting things <laughs> you are looking forward to or have purchased. Um, and if you found any fun and exciting patterns, let me know too. I'm always interested in new patterns. Say hi, Momo. Are you just gonna, are you just gonna sit in the middle of the paper? I think she's just gonna sit down in the middle of the paper. So anyway, um, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe and healthy. Um, I hope you have some kitty assistance. Um, they're going to be on camera, but not actually ever look at the camera. Oh, there we go. There's a face. There's a face. Yes. Okay. Um, I hope you're doing well and I hope to see you again soon. <laughs>